Welcome to the Walking Dead UK podcast, it's Entertainment Talks podcast for The Walking Dead on AMC and Fox. I'm your host Matthew, joining me today, my co-host is David, how are you today? I'm very well, thanks. Good, good. Uh, we're here today to talk about season 10, episode 15, the penultimate episode for the season and the temporary finale, I suppose. Uh, yeah, season 10, episode 15, The Tower. Uh, what did you think of this uh, temporary finale episode until we get another one? I really liked it. I thought it worked very well. Um, you got a bit more of, of Princess. It, it actually worked all right as a finale, like, you know, a temporary finale episode. Because, I mean, in previous in previous seasons, it would have served reasonably well as the finale. Um, because, I mean, it leaves things on a reasonable, on, on, a, on a cliffhanger. Um, but you know not not just the sort of cliffhanger that we've seen before where they're in mortal danger and then they come back you know next season so it's it's not like um you're you know it's not like the negan thing of them being like individual characters and that sort of frustration but you know we have them what them stuck in the train car at the end of the uh four seasons yeah fourth or fifth yeah okay yeah so it's stuck in the train car at the end of that season it's very much that sort of ending um so it actually kind of works uh i know we're going to come back for a finale anyway Mm -hmm. and i'm very excited to see whether that have you seen they ran a little clip um there's been a clip floating around of sort of an extended look at the um, finale episode you've seen that okay so we could talk a bit about that Mm -hmm. um but yeah, that look, that looks really good as well. But yeah, overall, I thought this was a this was a really solid episode. Yeah, no, I agree. This was a really really solid one, and uh, it's interesting when I kind of look at this season and think like we haven't had that many setup episodes. If you think about it, like this is the setup episode for the Horde finally, which we knew was like around uh, in different places. Obviously, Alpha had moved it a few times and this was beta kind of taking control of that horde and being the well not the alpha because you can't call him the alpha otherwise he'll threaten to kill you um yes <laughs> but uh him kind of like fully setting that up and getting the horde on the road if you will uh and kind of taking control of that pretty much on his own um and and setting those things up and setting up uh kind of the finale itself which yeah i mean typically walking dead would do more of these episodes but i'm glad yeah. that they actually haven't because it's been more like okay we're just going through the story like the death of alfred and, and the introduction of princess and then all these other things that have yeah have i mean happened. even even though this episode has been you know like you say it's sort of setting up the finale but it didn't feel that much like a, a setup episode to me either because mm. there's a lot of other stuff you've got the whole princess thing going on which is introducing new stuff so it didn't feel that much like a, a pure setup episode you know um it, the, the balance they've got at the moment i think he's working really well you know you've yeah. got because you've got new characters introduced you've got all that eugene ezekiel um yumiko princess storyline going on um and that was really more the sort of heart of this episode with the the little bits that were you know the the other sort of setup stuff had this been a few seasons ago you would have probably not seen you would have had that thing last week of like princess showing up and then not seen any of that for an episode whilst they jump back to and just purely focused on the uh on, on them setting things up in the camp i would have thought mm. so you know um yeah i thought this worked really well i thought this was a great balance yeah yeah really really enjoyed it for all that and it's i mean when i look at this half of the season uh i kind of think like okay you built up a little bit to alpha's death took a little bit longer than what i would have liked to get there but we got there in a reasonable amount of time and ever since the death of alpha i mean you had the michonne episode which was you know okay and all that sort of stuff but ever since the death of alpha and that they've really kind of not stopped for too much and i've uh, really really enjoyed it uh this season so far of course we still got one episode left to go we don't know when that's going to be because obviously there's the state of the world to sort out and things like that um but uh yeah i'm i'm obviously looking forward to that whenever that's going to be we have literally no idea when that's going to happen uh we have a couple of emails about that later as well which we'll we'll, we'll get to later but um yeah was, uh, what do you think of princess uh, princess after sort of fully seeing her because last week it was just a sort of like hey i'm here kind of thing 
I rather like her. She, I mean, she is a lighter character. She's not necessarily a, a, an out and out kind of comedic character in the way that somebody like Eugene can be or Jerry. You know, she's kind of quirky and funny, but there is a dark side to it as well. Yeah. In that, you know, she's she's kind of been on her own for so long, and she's gone a little bit crazy. And it's 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 a really really nicely played uh, uh, Paolo um, Lazaro who plays the the character i think it's doing a really solid job with it i mean i don't know the comic book character obviously but i know she mm-hmm. was a, a character for the books um but yeah i i think she she did a really um solid job of sort of balancing that because that that is a character that potentially could come off as very very annoying yeah. and i i think it's balanced quite well you know clearly you can see her motivations you can see that she is just yeah she is she is she is somebody that hasn't had any human contact for over a year mm. and that sent her a little bit nuts and but it's I, I think she's quite lovable and i i really enjoyed that portrayal i thought that was quite nice and um well put together and i'm interested to see more of it it's you know it's been it, walking dead gets quite dark it needs some lighter stuff in there yeah. and i think she's she's a good way of sort of introducing that without it being like out and out comedy um mm. you know so i think it's quite a good balance yeah this is a character I've, obviously i've been waiting for for like a couple of years or whatever uh to show up obviously i knew when roughly she would come in uh i didn't expect exactly like last episode or this episode for her to show up um mm. but uh she she did she's really really great so far she's she's one of my favorite comic book characters to be honest uh from, from walking dead of course um and uh yeah the actress is doing doing a really really great job of her she seems to be really happy with the responses that she's been getting which have been pretty positive uh there's been you know a couple of people that said oh she's a bit loud and obnoxious and all that and i, I you, you mm. can understand that to a certain degree you know she, she is a bit sort of loud and and kind of and and whatever but that's her character in a way, I mean, people were kind of saying the same thing about Negan when he came in. It's like, oh, he's 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 like ruining the show. He's too sort of loud and bossy. She's like a different type of that sort of character in a way. Because I, yeah. I, I I remember when she first came into the book and everyone was like, oh, Robert Kirkman's just doing a female Negan. I was like, mm, she's not really a female Negan. In no. a way, she, she's a loud no, female I... character, and obviously yeah. Negan is a loud male character, but they're not really similar in really that many ways no so. no i i you know negan certainly when he was first introduced i think less so now but mm. for when he was first introduced was you know well we've had this discussion about you know, whether he was he was basically trying to do the right thing for his group yeah, and because they've been um, murdered yeah and he was but he was he was funny and he was loud but it, it's a very different sort of type of humor i think and yes i mean princess is is kind of quirky and loud but i there is a kind of it is more quirkiness that brings the comedy and yes she is quite loud but i think Mm. she's i i'm very interested i mean that's going to be fascinating to see negan and princess on screen together (laughs) to see how they get on i yeah because i think negan will really take to her Mm. uh uh, just because she's kind of really strange and off the wall i think negan will rather have fun with that but uh yeah it's I, I I can sort of see why some people are comparing them, but they are very different types of characters. So I yeah, I am looking forward to seeing more of her and I I really like the the sort of the the, the there is another character that can bring some lightness in a slightly different way to the show. Yeah. Uh this episode's also got a couple of um comic book character sort of changes and twists. Obviously we don't have Michonne, so like I said last week, uh we don't have the Michonne princess conversations that's more ezekiel and uh princess this time so instead of michonne ezekiel's basically taken that place also the scenes later on when we get alden and Aaron uh surrounded by whisperers <laughs> that is um i think in a in a slightly different uh time for, for, for the scene because of because michonne is uh at at some point there is a bit where michonne and Aaron get surrounded by Walker, right uh, by whispers sorry and walkers i suppose as well because they're mixed in with the crowd um so they kind of changed that a bit as well but i think both of those work pretty well so uh but yeah mm. she's Mich- michonne's interesting when in this whisper story because in the book she's very very pre- she doesn't do anything 
specific, but she's very, very present throughout like the whole thing. And they've basically changed right. it so that you know they've kept Ezekiel around. Obviously, he skipped his death. He could die later on, of course, but he's uh, skipped his death. He's in that scene with Princess, and instead of Michonne and Aaron being surrounded by Walkers, it's uh, Aaron, who of course is still alive, and Alden. Obviously, they've got their yeah. little thing that they're doing. So um, yeah, just a couple of little changes, and th- those are remixes that I'm I'm fine with. So uh, yeah, I, I, th- I think I mean, you know, I this is you said I don't know the book, but yeah. the. I did certainly nothing. No, none of it stood out as people being in the wrong place or anything like that. And I, mm. I think it, it rather, it actually works rather well having King Ezekiel meet Princess. I, I think <laughs> that actually makes quite a lot of sense. And and there's a beautiful bit when they they meet in that first scene where he he stops himself saying, "Hi, I'm King Ezekiel." Yeah, and then he yeah, kind he of he almost yeah, yeah it, I'm Ezekiel. You know, it was. Um, I thought that was lovely as well. I would have loved to have seen Michonne, Ezekiel, and Princess all meet. I think that would have been pretty cool. Um, yes. But, but nonetheless, we got the Ezekiel stuff. So, uh, should yeah. we talk about that little promo clip? It's not really a spoiler, I don't think. We know who's coming back. No, no. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it, it it ends with the... Uh, that that clip ends with, with Maggie um, finding the note that Carol had left her, I think, is yeah. the, the end of that. Uh, there is another thing that... I mean, it's, a lot of it's just them sort of preparing for the the you know invasion and and that sort of stuff but there was another character that popped up in that a very distinctive character that popped up in that and i don't know is that a comic book character you mean the the, the person dressed in black or whatever with the blades yeah the 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 guy the guy in the in the sort of metal mask carrying two axes yeah Um, i don't recognize that guy that person particularly so unless i'm forgetting them but th- obviously, you think if that would be if quite someone, memorable. Yeah, if someone was to dress like that in the book, I'm pretty sure I would remember that. But I, I, I saw some images of that like th- through Monday before I even saw the episode, which fine. Um, but I was like, am I supposed to know who that? Am I supposed to be remembering who that is? But I, I just can't remember who that's supposed to be. Um, yeah. But I'm not because I don't really yeah remember anyone that's dressed like that or has weapons like that in the. Okay. In the book, but maybe it's possible I'm misremembering. I'm not saying like no, there's no way this is a comic character. I just can't remember if that's supposed to be someone. So because obviously I remembered, <clears throat> you know, Princess and 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 some of the other characters as well. But no, I, I was sort of looking at the the picture of that person for a good minute or so. And I was like, who who the hell is that? <laughs> you know, because it's a it's a very distinct outfit. But um, yeah, they're in the trailer for like a brief bit. Some people were joking, oh, it's Rick coming back, which is ha huh, funny and all that. But. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, then, of course, we do have the bit with Maggie. She's basically reading a letter from Carol explaining that, like, uh, Tara Henry, I think, was the my son is dead part. And uh, Enid is is dead as well. And uh, she's basically reading that letter from a box that's been been put out. So, yeah, everything to to kind of go with in the finale. Um, We shall see in the coming months. But, uh, yeah, that's a fair bit of pre-talk, I think. Lots to discuss, of course. And we've got the episode to uh, recap still. So um, we're going to jump into some housekeeping. And we'll see you for the rest in a minute. Today's sponsor is Kualu. If you'd like to get started with a domain name and a website today, just click on the link in the show notes. And that will take you over to Kualu to get started. They also have a live support chat system that you can use, which is in the bottom right-hand corner. So get started with a new website and domain name today with Kualu. Hey everybody, if you would like to get the ad-free versions of all of our podcasts and support entertainment talk along the way, all you need to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk, sign up either as a creator or as a Patreon, there's no difference there. That's just the option for either becoming a creator now or just staying as a patron for the moment. And then all you need to do is support us at the $1 level tier. That will get you access to all of the ad-free podcasts that we've done in the, in the past. And get you access to all the ad-free podcasts in that month as well. So it's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also become a patron at the $3 level tier. That gets you access to ad-free podcasts. And allows you to redeem a review of a TV show or a film of entirely your choice. That's one per month for either a TV show or a film review, which is at the $3 level tier. As always, thank you very much for listening. Back to the show. 
Alright, recently on Entertainment Talk, uh, I did do a United Cast uh, podcast, not for the games of course, because that's obviously suspended at the moment because of obvious reasons, uh, but I just did a podcast talking about like what's what's next with football, of course you've got sort of quarter of a season or roughly that amount sort of left, you've got about 10 games, there's still like four different competitions going, um, and discuss like, okay, should Liverpool be given the title, but if they're given it, what happens to everybody else, promotions, relegations, qualifications, all those sorts of things, not just for the English league, but for Spanish, German, Italian, etc, etc, uh, so lots that needs to be decided in the coming months, and if it doesn't get delayed or null and void, what happens to next season, discuss all that, there's plenty to discuss there, so uh, not really a podcast talking about any specific game, but more just me giving my opinion on what could, should, and maybe will happen next. Uh, no one knows at the moment, of course. It's all uh, up in the air kind of discussion. But, um, yeah, lots of decisions to be made over the coming months uh, about what happens with football, of course, at the moment. Um, Merritt Weaver is going to be returning to our screens next week. Uh, next week on Sunday, for those of you in the, in the, the US for HBO, uh, it's a mini series called Run is going to be airing... Is it Wednesday the 15th? That's the... Yeah, Wednesday the 15th of uh, April sorry. next week uh, for Sky Comedy. It's not a Sky Atlantic show. It's a Sky Comedy because it's a comedy series. Uh, yeah, Merritt Weaver is going to be returning to our screens. Uh, but the point of that is uh, I did a preview podcast for the mini series. I am going to be covering it possibly Wednesday, but more likely Thursday. Uh, so put the, day, put the day down as Thursday for me covering... Uh, those episodes but possibly Wednesday depending on how our, our sort of Wednesdays go obviously they're, they're kind of busy at the moment but um, yeah it should be it should be a fun series and I'm very much looking forward to uh, having Merritt Weaver back on the screen and Phoebe Waller-Bridge she's in the, the series as well of course from Philly yes. Bag and, and all those sorts of shows she's a recurring character but, yeah uh, she's a recurring character she's ex- i don't know, I think she wrote it she exec- exactly produced it but it's it's it's, yeah. it's uh it's from the production company she has with her writing partner so it's the people that were behind killing eve yes. and uh fleabag and you know so so it's those guys and, and merit weaver it should be something very very special it should be a really really solid show so yeah looking forward to that um if you want to find the podcast, it's, of course, on the main Entertainment Talk feed. And because it's a mini-series, I'm not going to be making a full iTunes feed thing for it. So it will be on the Entertainment Talk TV feed. So just search for Entertainment Talk or look for it on the website, and you should be able to find that. Uh, Let's Play Sunday's two episodes this week, uh, for reasons I'll explain in a minute. Uh, number 35 is for Dreams. That's just me browsing Dreams again, seeing what people have made and all that sort of thing. So that was pretty fun. Uh, Let's Play Sunday's episode uh, for Resident Evil 3. So if you would like to see me take on the nemesis uh, for the first ever time uh, because I'd never played Resident Evil 3 before nothing like that this was from the demo but basically the point of it is watching me react and try to deal with nemesis for the first ever time so you can watch me uh, attempt to do that so uh, that's this week's uh, let's play sunday episode so there's two of those speaking of resident evil 3 because it was so short i managed to review it on the sunday uh, i did give it a skip rating unfortunately but it explained different reasons as to why uh it's a, it's a good game and that sort of thing um and uh, yeah spoiler free section at the start and all that sort of thing so you can still go and listen to it if you want to do that uh but yeah that's Re- resident evil three of course from capcom uh gaming talk last week we did a bonus special episode uh episode 200 part two uh basically me and barry just chatting about video games uh, we had a bunch of different video games listed down and we just wanted to chat about them some of them were the final fantasy 7 remake which is out in two days the last of us part two which an hour after i posted it got delayed so that was great uh, and then we <laughs> talked about uh, we talked about resident evil 3 as well but that was before it got released, talked about Barry's sort of history with the game and all that, but uh, yeah, we're sitting there, you know, really excited for Last of Us Part 2 and discussing that, and then about an hour later it got delayed, so uh, you can blame me if you want to, I suppose. Um, Becoming Soul for Better Call Soul last week, uh, Season 5, Episode 7, tomorrow we'll be covering f- Season 5, Episode 8, there is 10 episodes for the season, so there's three more left. Uh, for this season so you can check that out as well uh, Zoe's podcast playlist for Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist did a podcast watch along or listen along uh, for, up to season 1 episode 5 uh, really fun show so far if you're in the UK and you want to watch that and you want to have some fun because we all want to do that right now uh, all four is your go to for that it's free so you can watch the show for free with adverts uh, if you're in the US it's on NBC and probably Hulu or something like that as well but uh, you can catch that show as well uh, the actual news episode for Gaming Talk last week that we did uh, we talked about Sam Fisher He's being added to a terrible Ghost Recon game, so that's exciting. Uh, and uh, we talked about Super Mario as well, because he's going to be getting some remasters for his anniversary this year. 
uh, for the Switch. And we also talked about Bethesda dropping out of E3. So we talked about that as well. Uh, Westworld last week for Season 3, Episode 3. Later we'll be covering uh, Season 3, Episode 4. So look out for that. And that is what we've been doing on entertainmenttalk.org and on podcast platforms. Uh, Princess introduces her introduces sorry herself to Eugene, Ezekiel and Yumiko. But as they're trying to figure out her unique personality, a group of walkers appear before they can um, stop her. Princess uses her LMG, I think that is, uh, machine gun to put down the walkers, which frightens the horses and they run away. Uh, Princess apologizes a lot. Uh, and knows where they can get transports, some wheels, I think she says, or something like that. Yes. Uh, they start walking across the city, but the group uh, and trio uh, you know, find uh, princess uh, directions to be uh, erratic. Uh, at one point, they walk through a live minefield, so this is really going great, where they find uh, the remains of their horses, and Eugene later realizes they could have taken a much quicker route. Um, we'll talk about the bike stuff in a bit as well, because that's a slightly later part. Um, yeah, she's trying to, like, impress the, the these guys. Yeah. And obviously she's like, yeah, I can deal with the walkers, and pulls out, you know, her LMG, one of the noisiest guns you yes. could probably think of. Uh, shoots them, shoots the walkers and that. Great, that's great. But, you know, you've basically caused the uh, horses to run off, which... Uh, and yeah. noise everyone so yeah I, I like how because you've got different personalities here you've got Eugene you've got Ezekiel Yumiko is like probably the most unsure here I think um, but uh, yeah it's it's interesting to see them trying to sort of work out and, and you know for me as someone who's obviously read the books to see this come to life in live action form yeah. was, uh, was cool as well so yeah I, I mean I I love the introduction the, the end of last week. I think this is a good continuation of that. Mm. And her actions actually make quite a lot of sense because, you know, she's, she's like an excited puppy and trying to impress <laughs> them. And she's like, oh, walkers, I could take these out. I'm not thinking about the fact that it might scare the horses because she's been on her own for a year and hasn't, you know, so she's got no sort of, she's just sort of overexcited about the whole thing. I, and wouldn't even think about the fact that it might scare horses because she probably hasn't seen a horse in years. So, you know, um, I, it, it's it sort of all makes perfect sense. And I think it's it's a nice sort of introduction and you, it gives you a nice bit of her sort of character of how, I, I mean, it is possible at that point you could look at it and go, well, maybe she's playing them. You know, maybe this is really elaborate sort of way of of playing them of of playing this sort of ditzy character but in actual fact she's an evil genius but you know it doesn't come across like that it it does come across as somebody that's just very excited to meet new people because she hasn't seen people in so long yeah. so um yeah i i really like the way that's open that opens and then the um yeah the walk through the minefield again it's another sort of screw up and then the reveal at the end of like they well they could have actually walked around and she'd taken the, the long way because of the fact that she wanted to spend more time with them all comes back to the this fact that she's been on her own for so long and she just wants to kind of make friends and it, it's sort of i mean it's annoying and dumb but it's it's kind of adorable as well uh so it's it's very very well played as i say it's a very difficult character to play i think because it could come across as extremely annoying and uh paloa i think her name is paloa lazaro um who is playing princess i think did a superb job with that as as the other thing i rather like was as i mentioned earlier the intro where like ezekiel sort of stumbles over introducing himself as king Rather than before uh, just saying, I, I'm Ezekiel, you know. Uh, I thought that was a nice little touch as well. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you one thing I liked about this that doesn't always work, but it did here. When you're when they're going through, cause I, you know, when, when they're meeting and they're chatting and that, there's no, like, threat. Obviously, there's a few walkers there, but you never really saw them as a threat. When they were going through the minefield, sometimes in a scene like that, in maybe a different show or something, you'd think, like, okay, there's... There would there would normally need to be stakes there in terms of okay one of these characters might die, but this I think the interesting thing with that particular mine scene is I wasn't not only was I not expecting anyone to even die or, or anything like that it was a situation where like she you're trying to watch her figure out her own kind of routine because like she said when she's doing the counting and stuff yeah, and yeah. Then she got then she got distracted and that I mean. 
at, at worst, like, okay, maybe Ezekiel gets blown up here. But I kind of thought, like, okay, that's probably very, very unlikely. But uh, yeah. But in in uh, that scene, yeah. I was kind of thinking, like, okay, it, it doesn't matter that, like, I don't think anyone's going to gonna kind of die here. Because there's obviously the risk of, like, okay, we're in the, you know, we're in a minefield. It's, it's a very, very dangerous situation. And in some other shows, you'd maybe look at that scene and think, like, oh, there was no stakes. No, no one died and that sort of thing. But it yeah. didn't really matter anywhere near as much here. No. I mean, it was played a bit more for comedy. It's interesting, yeah. actually, because there is another show which we are also covering this week, and Better Call Saul, which had an episode this week which was was very much the same sort of thing as mm. you knew the ta- you knew the characters. I mean, we knew with that show those co- the characters were were going to survive. Um, but the entire episode is about was sort of set out like a will or won't, will they or won't they? But you kind of, you already know they won't. And it, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you, know, you already know that they're going to make it through. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I think with the uh, yeah with this I think you're right and and the way they play that scene is less about the the tension of the you know is somebody going to die and like you say you know we've been talking for a few weeks about the potential that Ezekiel's not going to make out I think having randomly blown up in a minefield <laughs> wouldn't be the way they'd take yeah, him out I think there would be a huge outcry of someone dying here. yeah. So, yeah, I think um, there would have been a huge outcry if they killed him off that way. Yeah. Um, but, so I, I, I never really saw that as being likelihood, and it was played rather more for kind of laughs and and just introducing a bit more of that sort of princess character of of the fact that well, you know, her going, oh well, I've done this a million times. I just just got distracted by the dead horse, you know. Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the the worst case scenario here, you have like okay, maybe Eugene accidentally steps on one and it's one of those like because these weren't trigger ones were they They were like like, maybe you have a situation where like he steps on one and ezekiel comes in and is like heroically saves him or something that was like worst case scenario i kind of thought yeah Um, because when when you when you look at the different characters there you think okay yumiko's probably fine we just met princess ezekiel could die here but unlikely and then of of course you have um yumiko who i I didn't think would die either but it was more about seeing okay this is the environment the princess kind of knows and seeing her you know she's just developing a character because she's just come in and seeing that kind of um just develop with that and seeing her kind of you know the way she's been kind of living and stuff so i thought that was really good plus i i think yeah i think had one of them died because of the fact that princess took him through that minefield i rather suspect that that would have been the end for princess because you wouldn't have seen You know, even if they kept her alive at the end of it, they wouldn't have wanted her with them. So, I, you know, I, I think it, there was. I think that also adds to the fact that I don't think they were they were ever actually going to kill anybody off. But I, right. I thought it was a nice scene. You know, it, it was playing a minefield for fun, which I think I rather, you know, I rather like that. So it was less mm-hmm. about the sort of stakes of somebody dying. It was more about developing her character, which is a new character you kind of need to do at that point. I thought it, it helped highlight certain things about her, which was good. They did something similar in, uh, I think it was the, the previous season of Fear the Walking Dead. They had like a mine thing. It wasn't like the same situation, obviously. It was different characters and that. But uh, yeah, always cool to see um, zombies get blown up as well. So that was mm. cool. Uh, but after that, uh, Princess again apologises, admitting she's been alone for so long and only uh, wanted to uh, endure herself to them. Uh, she takes them to a garage with transportation, bicycles, and the trio uh, prepares to depart for their meeting with Stephanie. Uh, and they have a change of heart and they let Princess join them. So she's part of the group, which is good. Um, yes. I did kind of laugh quite a bit of like, oh, this is what you meant by wheels. But like... yeah. They're still will you could you know you can still get round yeah. them and that, but they were obviously I, I expecting mean, like a car or something, weren't they? So and in actual fact, I mean, you do, it's one of those things that a light bulb goes off when you kind of get to this thinking, yeah, actually, why aren't they using bicycles a lot more? Because I mean, you've got you've got Daryl on his motorbike, mm-hmm. which is fine, but motorbikes are quite noisy, and one thing you and don't really want to be. Yeah, and need petrol. And one of the things you don't really want to be is a have it run out of juice somewhere, and b <laughs> you don't want it. You know, it, it, they're noisy, and yes, you can get away quite fast, but they are going to attract walkers. Mm. The great thing about a bicycle is it's it's relatively quiet. It's you've not got to feed it like a horse. I mean, yes, you've got to kind of cycle on it, and you know that takes some effort. But I. You know, I I actually, it's one of those things that you kind of think, yeah, why haven't we seen bicycles a bit more in the apocalypse? They sort of make sense as a form of transport around there. 
um mm. yeah decent mountain bike get you over some of those dodgy looking roads i think that actually would make quite a lot of sense so you know yeah it, whilst it wasn't what they're expecting actually she had an entire garage full of them then that actually would be quite <laughs> useful you know because particularly if you're trying to escape walkers they they're going to be reasonably quick to get away from walkers in uh, mm. you know on a bike certainly i mean you can pretty much run away from a walker it's just when they're in big groups but you know bicycle would certainly help um so yeah i do more bikes in the apocalypse <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I get what you mean they were a lot a lot better of an option um because all you really have to take care of is what the brakes maybe the gears maybe pump the yeah, tires I mean, up there's, there's the risk um, of you maybe getting a puncher but you know you've got i'm sure there were i mean if it was a bike garage there must have been a bunch of puncture repair kits in there so you know yeah you, yeah but but you'd ra- you'd rather do that than look for petrol in this state mm. of the world. So I get what you mean. Um, and plus, like you said, a lot more stealthy and and all that sort of thing. So um, good in the end. But yeah, she's joined the group and see, that's great. Um, yeah. See what what you actually want is you want like a um, one of those uh, powered solar panel solar powered or you know the bike powered ones, the dynamo electric bikes that recharge as you pedal them. So you can pedal them for a bit, but then you can use the uh, an electric motor attached to them. See, that's what you really want, because then you've got the best of both worlds, because they're silent as well. That's huh. that's your mode of transport you want in the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, she's joined the group. Um, you said you're looking forward to seeing more of her, so am I. And uh, yes. yeah, we'll, we'll go from there with her. Uh, moving over to Beta, he's hearing voices in his head uh, and leads his horde towards um, horde of Walker, sorry, towards uh, Oceanside via Alexandra. Aware of their approach, most of Alexandra has fled to a nearby hospital, uh, with only Alden and Aaron uh, staying behind to report on Beta's movements to Gabriel via Walkie. While waiting, Carol and Kelly look for radio uh, parts for Luke and Carol. Uh, Apologises to Kelly about what happened at the cave. Kelly accepts her apology and believes Connie is still alive. Uh, I still believe that she is as well. Um, yes, because I think that's they would Connie. have seen the... the, well, um... the, the yeah, there have been the, the uh, masked woman with the, the knives. It could be. I mean... There's, although you'd think if it was a, the 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 person with the mask and the knives, you would think that's probably a new character, because if it was Connie, you would have thought she'd just pulled the mask off and wouldn't kind of have gone into the fight stand straight away. But hmm. I, you know, it's my guess is it's either it's either a remixed version of a character that's been in the comic books, or I mean, it could be Connie, or it. It could be, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, could be somebody we've seen before, and they're it's going for Heath. a reveal. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, could be Heath. Yeah, that would be so, better. Yeah, so yeah, would be hilarious that. Yeah, but uh, I, it, I don't know who it is to be honest. So um, there we go. But uh, yeah, I quite like this scene between um, Carol and uh, Kelly. I thought it worked pretty well. I thought the apology and stuff was. You know, worked pretty well. See, she put a lot of everyone's lives in danger, including herself, multiple herself, uh, multiple times. Um, but she's kind of recovered from that in a way. I mean, you know, she was hallucinating Alpha, and now that's seemingly kind of gone, and she's maybe on the right track. We'll see what happens with Carol. Obviously, she's had a lot of trauma to deal with in this series since, yeah, the pilot, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, what do you think? What do you think of like kind of the state of Carol and the conversation with Kelly? Yeah, I thought um, the, the you know Carol Carol's going through a lot at the moment. I mean, mainly of her own um, making <laughs> more than anything else. I mean, uh, but I thought the conversation between the pair of them was quite nice and quite sweet, and and the fact that Kelly accepts the apology. Um, there is a beautiful bit actually in that where uh, Kelly is talking about her. Um, deafness being a superpower right yeah because that is actually something that um has been put in specifically because angel theory is playing that character yeah. and this is something that angel theory has said in real life um because she had the experience of losing her her hearing and that she talks about her the, the her deafness being a superpower as as well so 
it's actually something that sort of comes directly from Angel rather than, you know, and they've written it into Kelly. And, but it fits and it works as well um, for, for, you know, as well as working for Angel in real life, it works for Kelly as a character. So I thought that was quite lovely that they, they worked that in. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a really nice conversation between the pair of them. And I think it was something that needed to happen because Carol obviously feels terrible about what happened in the cave and, I, I I mean I'm with you. I definitely think Connie's still alive because I I think otherwise we would have seen her die. I mean it's very very rare that you get somebody killed off on screen never for, to see them again. I mean that's why we've always talked about Heath because Heath just vanished. Um, and yeah, we never saw him in any kind of danger really. Yeah, yeah, we never saw him like die. We never saw him in any danger. He just disappeared. And I mean, we know why he disappeared because he went off to do 24. But um, we we never saw him disappear you know, on, on screen and we never saw a dead body. Or And usually the rule is in something like this, if you don't see a dead body, they're not dead. Um, you know, or if they are, you usually within the next episode or two, we see them as a walker. Like, right, like with uh, Mary, recent example. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, usually, that was the same we'll see... episode, but yeah, y- yeah. Usually, we'll see them at some point as a walker. So, right. if that is the case, um, I, you know, the fact that we've not seen Connie come back yet, um, I, I rather think she must still be alive out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good reveal for the for the uh, finale as well. So, yeah, um, we shall see. Um. But uh, yeah, what do you think of? Because obviously we got the beta part in here as well. He's on his way to the nearby hospital. Um, what do you think of those kinds of scenes? Now that first of all, now that we've seen the whispers for two seasons roughly, um, and second of all, because obviously Alpha's not there anymore, apart from half her dead face. Um, yeah. What, what do you kind of think of those scenes at the moment? With I, beta? I mean, they're they're quite kind of interesting because you do have this, you know, um, the 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 whereas alpha sort of yes she ruled by a certain amount of terror but the people that were following alpha were following them out of you know loyalty to the idea and the cause and and they believed this was right um I, you rather get the feeling that most of the uh, people that are following beta are following him out of pure abject fear right um you know i mean he has clearly lost it at this point as we see with the the whisperer later on where with daryl um you know clearly i mean he's hearing voices because i rather suspect those walkers haven't started talking and they appear to be talking back to him so he's clearly hearing voices um and the reaction and the way he's talking like you know when one of them says to him accidentally calls him alpha and he she's kind of oh shit he's gonna kill me you know uh so i i kind of I, yeah, it, it's kind of interesting watching that um, and seeing this deterioration of this guy. Uh, the new mask looks cool there. Yeah, it looks so, right. yeah it's like stapled yeah. together or something, isn't it? Or it's um, it's it's apparently the uh, Greg Nicotero and uh, and Ryan worked on the a few variations of the mask together. The one they settled on apparently is sewn together with guitar string. That's how he sewed the two bits together, which oh, I think right. is a lovely yeah. touch. The mm-hmm. really nice touch, you know, given because it's the type of thing that would have been around in that room that he found himself in. Yeah, well, he so, smashed one up, didn't and, he? So, <laughs> yeah, and he smashed one up. So, yeah, exactly. So, I, I thought that was a really lovely touch that that's what they ended up using. Um, right. But yeah, and the new master looks good. I think mm-hmm. it's great. I mean, a question for Beta would kind of be okay if I've still got a rope because he is the leader, but he's not allowing people to call him the alpha and obviously if you refer to him as the alpha it's like offensive and he will yes. turn around and kill you no matter who no, you did. are yes um the question kind of to him would be uh, okay so when when you refer to the alpha in any sort of way and the alpha's dead like what what what's what's up with with that i mean i know you're not you know he, obviously he's not gonna answer the that sort of question sanely because like you said he has he has kind of lost it and that sort of thing i i wouldn't ima- i wouldn't imagine if one of the whisperers asked him like okay wh- who do we refer to as kind of the alpha because like she's literally not like it's the alpha is no longer a person they can turn around to and call alpha and even though he's the leader of the group he still wants to be called 
beta because obviously we see the woman make, make the mistake yeah, like, yeah. Uh, of calling him that but when he in the, from now in in the future refers to the alpha or someone in the group does what is that is that just like some sort of is she like a spirit in the group now or some sort of well i mean like i that? i think i think alpha that i i would say that in in beta's head the fact that he took half of alpha's face and so she's sort of almost living on within him but so he is sort of carrying her spirit i guess but he himself is still beta um so Mm -hmm. she is sort of alive in him i think is probably the the way he would see it um therefore she is still alive and not dead and um he is still beta but he is sort of somehow communicating with her i'm guessing that's some of the voices that are in his head so um yeah i mean i i I rather think it's probably the mask that's the thing that's sort of whispering to him so yeah that that i think is why he gets upset about it because as far as he's concerned she's still alive so he he hasn't taken that position he's still the beta so. Yeah, he's still better. He's still being guided by the voice. So, I you know I think that's why it upsets him so much, and that's why he's like, no, she's still here, and anybody that says otherwise is going to die. Right. So without any hesitation, that, that's the way. Yeah, that's the way I read it anyway. Okay. Uh, but moving on from that, Negan tries to apologize to Lydia for killing Alpha, of course, because she was her mother, even though she wasn't really her mother in the end uh lydia emotionally struggles with um both her anger towards negan for the act but also letting out her hatred uh of alpha uh, and the two hug uh judith travels with uh let's put you know pause there for a second um yeah there's a slightly earlier scene as well where like there's a cat or something and and lydia's yeah yeah you know you know petting the cat or whatever and, and Negan goes over and talks to her for the first time so you get kind of a, a mini setup, and then obviously this this payoff later on um I mean Negan clearly wanted her to like do the whole you know lightly hit him and you know what, what she ended up doing and that was what he was trying to get yeah. her to do uh I I quite like these things I think they work um quite well um and, and that sort of thing uh, I think both the the actors do do a really great job in this sort of situation and I mean yeah like logically if they both look at the situation obviously Alpha was you know too far gone and and all that sort of thing but at the end of the day she still was her mother and there was a time where Alpha uh was more you know sane and, and all that sort of thing before yeah. the apocalypse and even just uh before she turned into alpha so obviously lydia's still sort of got those you know earlier memories of her and everything um so it's not like lydia doesn't care about alpha obviously she knows what happened and she knows that um alpha had to go but uh yeah with negan the one that had to do it and obviously lydia knows that that's probably what had to happen and uh it's still it's still like difficult for her and stuff but um no i thought this was this was a good way to kind of uh I don't know if conclude is maybe the right word. I don't know if we'll revisit yeah. this in some way. But to, to kind of have a conversation about that. Okay, I did kill your mother, but let's agree she was too far gone. But let let your sort of anger out and that sort of stuff. I thought that was that was quite good. Yeah, so. I, I really like this scene. I mean, Negan's becoming... Uh, the, the interesting thing about Negan is he's very protective of all of the children. Um, and, you know, he, the one thing that he can't abide is the violence towards kids. And... Um, which makes sense if you, you know, the, the Negan's background is a teacher, which you know, he's sort of we know from the comic books. That's, I mean, that may change for the TV show, but that certainly seems to be the background that they're playing on. And it's, it's so it sort of makes sense that he has this affinity for looking after and making sure the kids are okay, and particularly with Lydia, you know, and obviously he feels very responsible for killing her mother, but. They all know that that was the way it had to go. And even Lydia, I think, understands that. But then, you know, she does have this conflicting feeling because it was her mother. So, yeah, it it was a really interesting scene, this. And Negan's sort of taken over a de facto father role of of Lydia. And this is something you're seeing with Judith and Daryl as well, you know, because there's nobody else directly around to to look after... um, her although you know the he does talk daryl does talk about that with judith later but 
yeah, you, it's interesting. You are sort of seeing these relationships form between the the sort of these father figures or mother figures to the younger characters as well, which is quite nice. Um, and I thought that was a lovely little scene between the pair of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you've seen that with Negan before, like with with Carl, uh, with yeah. uh, Judith, now with Lydia, and yeah. maybe a couple of other characters. I don't think he's interacted with with RJ yet, but not many people actually have. No, but, uh, but I mean RJ's RJ's very young, so yeah, yeah. But it, it like like I said, he's 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 shown that care for for children um, before in the series as well. So I thought that was good. Uh, speaking of Judith, uh, she travels with Daryl uh, while he patrols, killing a whisper spy. Judith tells Daryl that after Michonne's departure, she has become more concerned about losing more of her family. Daryl can't promise he will never, uh, or he sort of does pro- promise he won't leave, uh, but assures Judith um, she has a larger family than just him. Um, I thought this was played phenomenally well by um, yeah. Ke- Kelly Fleming. I think this is some of the best young acting I've seen. Um, to be yeah. honest, I, I mean, I mean, when you when you think of good young acting at the moment, you think of what Stranger Things, maybe because they're all pretty young yeah, still. Yeah, I yeah. know that they're older than Kaylee, obviously, but um, yeah, that, those are the sorts of sort of actors I think of at the moment. Obviously, you have had, uh, you know, Lydia, who is obviously still a bit older than than Judith, but that sort of age range where because she's like a young teenager or whatever, isn't she, mm. uh, Kaylee? But I, I I was really quite um not su- not surprised because obviously she, she's shown some great acting talent so far in the series, but this was on a level above I think what she's done before. Just just the emotional angle of like her talking to Daryl about Michonne leaving. Uh, you see her start mm. kind of like crying and whatnot, and um. Yeah, I, it it there was a little bit of humour for me that kind of stu- snuck in as well because if you think about this in a meta kind of way, and obviously Denai didn't you know renew, she renewed her contract for season ten but then decided that will be her last one she's left. It, it it's a bit I I kind of like laughed and not really laughed but there was a bit of amusement in there as well just the way they're talking about departures and she's like yeah. oh I'm scared that you'll leave and then you know kind of meta wise like nope he's got a contract he's not he's not sort of going yeah. um it, it didn't but, but, it didn't it didn't yeah. like ruin an, an emotional scene for me the, the emotion in the scene still worked really well but I thought there was a little bit of meta in there about like oh my mum's gone maybe you're gonna go and it's like no I've got a I've got a contract I'm not I'm not <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh yeah. still no, thought it was I great mean... Yeah, no, I, 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 which also works with. Well, I can't promise I'll never leave, but you know. Uh, but yes, I, I I know exactly what you're saying. I I mean, we seem to praise Kylie Fleming every week, but I, she is just phenomenal. She's 13 years old. It, it, she puts in a phenomenal performance every single time she's on screen. But I, I thought this was particularly strong between her and Norman. Um, just just really nice well played the with judith kind of doing the, the the thing where you can see her you know she kind of half tells the truth about her mother as well about the fact that michonne has gone off somewhere on a mission but doesn't mention the fact that he, she's gone after rick because she knows that Daryl was Rick's best friend and doesn't want him to leg it as well, you know, um, because she's worried that if she tells uh, Daryl that, that that's what Michonne is going to do, he'll disappear as well. So she sort of tells a half truth there. Um, mm-hmm. And you can see, you know, it's upsetting her as well, you know, the, this idea that everybody might be leaving. And, you know, and, and I thought Daryl, the, you know, the, just the, the scenes between the two of them, I, I thought was so beautifully played. Um, and his response was very honest. You know, the thing about, well, I can't say I'll never leave, but you do, you know, everybody here will do everything to look after you. Yeah. And it's not like she can't look after herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I thought this was, like I said, a, a, an even, an even bigger step above what she's already done in the show. And, uh, it's, it's great to have her on the show. So, cause sometimes it's very difficult to get like, child or, or young actors to do a good job i've i've seen some pretty bad examples in the past um but uh i think this this is really something quite good so um that was great as well but uh yeah just a little kind of meta thing about like yeah I, i'm not leaving i've got a contract but um yeah, <laughs> yeah. W- w- what do you think about, what do you think about um the whole whisperer spy stuff i thought oh, that was, yeah i, I mean, thought that was okay yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that. Well, that was again was a sort of interesting thing because I mean you've got the you've got that the whole actual action sequence behind or the the sequence behind that of 
um, Daryl taking Judith along and then, um, you know, and agreeing to take her. And then you, you've got them coming across this spy. And she's kind of horrified about the fact that, or she's, she's kind of upset by the fact that he kills her when he probably didn't need to. Um, although arguably he did. I mean, it, it's an interesting one that because they were in, you know, and he sort of goes, well, she was going to die anyway. So, you know, uh, but she was saying, uh, I, you, you know, the, basically going, dude's gone crazy. I'm getting out of here. You know, I was out of here kind of scouting, but I don't want to go back to Beta because he's gone nuts. So, you know, she was kind of saying that, but then you don't know whether she's actually telling the truth or just saying that to try and get out of it. So, um, it, yeah. And and then, of course, he shoots her and, you know, having already shot her with one cross belt and then kind of turns to Judith and's like, well, she was going to die anyway. So, you know, better to do it quick than leave her to die slow, you know, um, which is probably true. But I'm not sure whether she would have died out from that wound or not. I don't know. Um, I mean, there's the other part as well where, like, Judith sort of says to Daryl about, okay, what about if you, that was you who'd, like, died in some some ditch yeah. or something? And that is an interesting point, you know. Obviously, can you imagine if, like, one of the major characters died that way and just got a sort of... Because people don't really know where, where that is. There's lots of different areas in the woods and it's a, it's a pretty big place and that. And you could just end up have, be, being some sort of lost dead body. Um, yeah. in the woods but I, I do kind of like as well the the way with that specifically Daryl kind of gruntly dismisses that because that is Daryl in a way like he, he sort of doesn't want to have that conversation that, that specific part of the conversation with Judith uh, and I thought that was that was fairly good so um, yeah cause, cause, I mean they, they've both got points you know Daryl sort of saying okay she you know she's a whisperer she probably would have died but then Judith making the argument about that okay what about if that was you and you'd been left in a ditch and stuff but so they both got good points. Um, yeah, yeah, and I mean it. It is a point of point of like, well, they're not going to invite this person back, are they? Um, because no. not after all the other problems they've had with whisperers, they wouldn't do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, you tie the, you leave them out to die, in which case that risks them getting up and going back to the group and saying, "Hey, they're all over here," or you know, it's tricky. So I. Yeah, I kind of get. I I think you know, had I been in his position, I would probably would have. I think I would probably have gone down the same route. I would have thought. Yep. Um, and then we've got uh, the voices in Beta's head direct him towards the hospital, which of course is where some of the our survivors, heroes, group, whatever, uh, are currently hiding. Alden and Aaron uh, try to contact Gabriel, but are captured by a group of whisperers. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Beta and his horde arrive at the hospital. We sort of see them just outside. Uh, and we do see in the clip for, I was about to say, next week's episode, the next episode, uh, they're basically outside of there and Gabriel is preparing people or comparing the, uh, preparing these, uh, I think it's RJ and maybe Gracie? I think that might have been. Um, uh, yeah, it could have been. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, preparing them for what's about to come and mentioning the different groups and stuff. So... Uh, exciting stuff. I mean, we're very much looking forward to the finale. We don't know when it's going to be, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, what do you think of... I mean, it's a simpler scene, a simpler kind of little cliffhanger end to the episode. Uh, but he has arrived. So... Yeah, I mean, as I say, it's uh, it sort of works as a as a temporary season finale. And it, it would have worked as either a mid-season or even a season finale. That, I think, in previous seasons, you know, there's you could have left it there quite easily. Mm. Um so I'm I'm kind of intrigued to see what they're going to do for the actual finale. Presumably, we're going to get some resolution to um, them invading that hospital. I, in, in terms of the Whisperer War in the book, is I mean I know it was a lot longer in the book. Have is this hospital stuff in there? I don't remember a hospital per se. There's a there's a big there, there is. How can I say this without kind of spoiling things? There is. The obviously they do fight the horde at a point because obviously the horde is is still yeah. the book and that and we still get the most of the same stuff. I don't remember a specific hospital, but I do remember right. a big. I don't want to say exactly where it is because that might even give certain things away or whatever. Right, but there right. is a fight, big fight with the horde, and that basically concludes the Whisperer arc. So they should be able okay. to conclude it with the next episode. 
Okay, so so yeah, so we are probably looking at them ending the Whisper War, which would make sense because um, I, I think season eleven, yeah, yeah, I, I I think at this point, I mean, it, it felt like that was probably going to be the end of it because I think at at this point, I'm not entirely sure you could drag this on for you know because the most you could do is probably drag it on for another half season and i think that would drag it out quite a lot um doing that because you know he's already kind of gone after them once and it's what are you going to do after that you know they, they, this looks very much like a kind of final stand set up uh we've already got them setting up what we assume is going to be the next thing which is this uh, the Eugene thing with him meeting the other group. Yeah, yeah, they're already setting that up. So I I think we're kind of at a point now where I think it would. You know, the, I I was assuming that the war will probably end at the in the next episode. I just wondered whether that was you know whether that was what you think based on the book knowledge. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean that that would make sense. I presumably, I mean they there is a bit in that an ominous bit in that clip saying we're not going to all make it through this, which I think is obvious. We're probably going to lose some characters next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, not next week when it comes back. Uh, we are probably going to lose some characters in that finale. I don't know exactly who. I was just about um, to ask you: Do you have any death predictions? No, I mean it's tricky because. You know, I, I've said numerous times Ezekiel seems like a possibility, but then he's not he, he's not with that group. And as I said before, the the two things I see happening with Ezekiel is when they meet the other group and they cure him, or he somehow gets killed. But um, the fact that he's now away and seemingly in safety because he's you know he's not with the rest being attacked, um. I'm not sure. Maybe they do save him. Maybe this other group manages to save him. But so I don't know. Um, I mean, Gabriel's the other major character. I'm hoping Aaron Aaron stays around. Uh, Alden, maybe you could probably lose um, the the uh, what's the other guy? The music teacher guy, um, Luke. Luke. Luke, maybe. Um, I mean, there's there's not that many big name characters mm-hmm. that you can lose back out of that main group, is there? At this point, no comment. <laughs> I, I I yeah I, I I'm trying uh. to think who is actually still in that in that sort of main <laughs> character group that is still there that I think you could potentially lose. I mean, you've got I mean Jerry's there, but I think I don't want to lose Jerry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connie, we haven't seen uh yeah so i don't know i i, I kind of think connie's going to come back in some i was going to say a badass way but uh i mean that's still possible but not not necessarily this new mysterious character um it, yeah. it could be her it might not be her but i still think she's going to come back in some cool way is 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 what yeah. i meant by that so i mean it would be interesting if that character was maggie but i seems a bit out of character for maggie Maybe? No, I it don't seems know. like because the clip that we see, no, it seems like it's a different person because we see her and yeah, yeah. this new character in the same thing. So yeah, yeah. So I yes, I don't know. Mm. Uh, and it won't be Dwight because he's on fear because so like he's not gonna yeah. come back. So. I mean, Mo- Morgan will be the other one. I mean, I know he's been on fear. I don't know. I haven't watched fear, so I don't know whether he's still alive on fear or whether he's still around. But um. Morgan will be the other one, but then it would be a bit of a change to have two axes compared to his pole arm, I guess. So, okay, um, know that character, but yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to. Hopefully, they don't disappoint with the finale. I don't think that they're going to. We've made that prediction no. before and been wrong. But uh, I think we're just in a bit of a different era at the moment with the uh, yeah. with the Walking Dead. Uh, I think what they've done so far this season, pacing wise, has been really great. The way they've paced the uh, the Whisper stuff, I think it's been really really good. And I'm just looking forward specifically with the finale to seeing obviously the conclusion of the Whisper story, hopefully, and this transition to what what they've been teasing for a while. This next kind of uh, group, I think that should be pretty exciting. And then you bring in Maggie back. You've got this new mysterious character who could be someone I've forgotten. Um, but that should all be pretty exciting. So, and you could probably do all of that in forty-five minutes, I suppose. So, yeah, uh, and, and yeah, of course, no, and of course, you've got a big 
horde to fight, which is always exciting. Yeah. So I mean, I I would assume that they are going to end the next episode with the meeting between Eugene and his girlfriend. Um, that I I would, do, yeah. I I would guess that that is where they're going to end it, but um, I don't know, but. Yeah, you know, you're probably going to spend a lot of the next episode, in, you know, with the fighting and stuff. I would have thought, mm-hmm. um, and then I suspect you'll kind of leap back to the Eugene meeting the whoever this person is. Um, so yeah, and we've got to have Maggie show up at, at some point as well. Mm-hmm. I think what I'm going to do before we right, before we get into the emails, there's just one other thing I want to mention. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a little bit, but didn't know when exactly to do it. Uh, seeing as we don't know how long the situation with the world is going to last and of course we have to wait for the next episode uh, and of course we still have to we still would have had to wait for next season anyway i'm going to i think pick up the book from this point like right at the end of the whisper stuff and then read through to the end in in one kind of go right not, ne- not necessarily a binge read obviously i'll do it at my own pace but i think I'm gonna, just to completely refresh my memory because even though yeah. it's not like required i read the book i just want to refresh that part of my memory because obviously i still remember a lot of stuff but there might be things i've uh slightly forgotten plus for my own kind of memory of the book i want to uh reread that plus then i'll actually finish the book as well because i haven't read the last two issues still so uh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do that as a big kind of chunk if you get what i mean so because mm-hmm. uh, we're on about issue 170 something for the show and the book ended at issue 193 okay so, so that, I, th- I think that's roughly that where we are so uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to do that because obviously we don't know when the episode is going to come back. Even if I'm still reading the book by the time the 16th episode comes around, we're still going to have to wait for at, at least October, if not later, till uh, season 11. So I've got uh, plenty of time to do that. So that's yes. what I'm going to do as well. Uh, but let's get in some emails. We have plenty of other cool things to discuss. Of course, if you want to send in, we still have one episode of course left. You can still send in feedback for that podcast as well when for next season and stuff uh, or just to get in contact with entertainment talk uh, matthew at entertainment talk.org twitter e talk uk there's a contact page and information in your show notes mitchell i was watching clips of season seven and eight i'm sorry you had to do that uh oh boy uh what a difference we have uh now given angela's success with season nine and ten how would you compare her to other showrunners uh so i think he's talking about outside of walking dead and things as well because for walking dead we've had frank darabont Glenn Mazzera, Scott Gimple for most of the actual show's existence, uh, and then Angela Kang. So that's what we had. Because uh, if I remember, it was yeah, Darabont season one. Glenn Mazzera was two to four. Gimple was four Something to like eight, that, yeah. and then Kang, Angela Kang was nine and ten. And obviously, probably season eleven. And well, I would assume maybe the rest of the show at this point, Angela Kang would be. Um, I mean, when I think of like the greatest showrunners, I think of obviously you've got Vince Gilligan, Breaking Bad. You've got people yeah. like uh, you know Damon Lindelof and uh, JJ, not necessarily showrunner, but you've got JJ Abrams. He's done some great stuff. You've got um, David Simon, The Wire, and uh, The Deuce, and uh, I th- he's doing something else coming up soon as well. But I've got to watch the rest of The Deuce as well. Uh, those are the show- some of the showrunners that kind of come to mind uh, when-, when I'm thinking about those. But um, I mean, she, is this the first thing that she's done a showrunner job for? Because before she was like a producer or something on on The Walking Dead, wasn't she? Yeah, she's she was a staff writer on Terriers, and then um, Terriers being wasn't that a was that I think Skilligan? Oh no, Ted Griffin did that. Okay. Um, so yeah, she was a staff writer on a show called Terriers. Uh, she was, and then. Um, was a writer on that, and then she became a producer on The Walking Dead, um, and then exec producer, you know, and then worked her way up. She was basically a writer, you know, a writer, story editor, producer, co-exec producer, exec producer, and now a showrunner. So she worked her way up over the years through sure. the ranks. So she knows the show inside and out, and I think that's probably why she's so good at it. You know, it's because she's been living and breathing this show pretty much since, like, 2011. So... Um, you know, she's she's got a lot of experience in it, and uh, it's one of those things that you kind of think she must have been sat in the background going, oh, "I wouldn't have done it like that." Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so yeah. I mean, she, I, I think she's she's doing certainly compared to the other showrunners. I mean, Gimbal, we we rag on Gimbal a lot, but 
he was he certainly righted the ship at the point it needed writing because he came in i think season four because i think Mazira actually left at the end of season three yeah um yeah so gimbal comes in at season four and i think he righted the ship for a number of years um and it was only the 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 sort of final two seasons of his that he really i think to seem to uh, just lose his grasp grasp on it um darabond is a slightly different thing because he was essentially fired and it would have been a vastly different show had, had Darabond still been in control of it. Yeah, so the zombies it, and stuff it, were going to be different and all that. So Yeah, it, it would have been a very, very different series had Darabond carried on. Um, so I, I think you kind of... I mean, and I love Frank Darabond. I think he's fabulous. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I mean, this is... The, the, he was responsible for the Shawshank Redemption, so you know, I mean, and the Green Mile, and uh, I, I mean, he's fa- fantastic. So, I think, yeah, that would have been a very different thing. So, I think you've got to sort of set that aside. Um, Mazira, I think, struggled. Gimbal certainly for the first few seasons was was quite good. I think Angela Kang though has has managed to push the show in in just generally in a better direction than it was going in previously i think it, i don't know what had happened to gimbal i don't know whether he just got a little overwhelmed with everything and maybe he was trying to do the spin-off things and couldn't juggle everything at once right. maybe that was the case and he was just struggling in which case his new role is makes far more sense um but certainly i mean you know seasons four five and six i think he did a reasonable job it was just sort of seven eight and nine that he started to struggle a bit. Um, so, you know, Angela Kang, I think he's certainly up there. She's, she's, I think this season has been paced really well. Um, I think any issues that we've had with this have been, I don't think there's been a single episode where we've gone, yeah, that was okay. The, this season, I think generally we've been like, no, that was really solid all the way through. And whilst there was a few episodes like that, maybe in season 10, I think a lot of that wasn't her fault. It was her kind of having to work around things that had been imposed on her yeah, through like the exits of several big characters. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the exits of several big characters and her having to kind of dig herself out of some of the holes that they got themselves into. So, you know, she had to deal with quite a lot. And I think, I think any issues with season 10 were more that and certainly season 11, where she's been in full control of everything and had the direction, I think has been a really solid season. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, um, you know, comparing to the others, they all had their their different quirks, but I think she's doing an incredibly good job. Um, in terms of other showrunners, I mean, you know, we, I, I don't know, we've we've got various favourites. I mean, you know, Vince Gilligan, like you say, I think he's superb. Mm-hmm. I think the fundamental difference there with, like, her and Vince, for example, is Vince, like, went ahead, created Breaking Bad, had a plan from start to finish, and just did it. Whereas with someone like Angela, not only is she, you know, in a night comes in in a ninth season as opposed to like a first and a pilot or whatever, um, she's not. She's then adapting something that's still from a book, which Vince wasn't doing. She's then also, you know, trying to pick up the pieces after a couple of bad seasons yeah. of the show, and it, it's just it, it's a very very different show, at least at that point, for her to be doing as, uh, instead of. Uh, Breaking Bad and that, so you, you've got some like completely fundamental differences as well. But like like we said uh, quite a few times in season nine and ten, she's done a definitely much better job. So yeah, there you go. and I mean you know I I have got other favourite showrunners. I mean you know in other things, people like Eric Kripke, I I'm a huge fan of. Who's the guy behind um, you know Supernatural and Revolution and The Boys and Timeless? You know I think he's he's a superb. Mm-hmm. showrunner and a writer and show creator but again it's a very different sort of thing in that in most cases he's the creator of the series whereas angela is isn't um she's dealing with other people's property um i mean okay with Kripke in this case you know was it the boys was a comic book adaptation but it was very much his sort of thing um so yeah i mean i i just think she is doing a solid job out of it mm-hmm uh jared says it sucks that we don't have the finale next week it does indeed but i understand why some people's attitude towards the state of the uh finale episode and the world is truly bizarre i think we can certainly agree with that uh any guesses as to when we could get the episode and how much time will it 
will it actually take to finish making the episode? So, obviously, you've got the two different questions there. First of all, well, no one really knows when the situation is going to end. There's been guesses and predictions no. and, and, and everything like that. But it's just going to depend on people staying at home, which people aren't still doing. Um, yes. But once the world has cleaned itself up, it, it, you know, if you want to put it that way, they have to. They, they do. They do still then have to actually make the rest of the episode and do the effects and things like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, the episode is shot, I believe, but they still have to do yeah. the effects. So, so not well. That much it's time. well. No, what they've said is they have to do the post production on it, and it depends yeah. what what post production is missing. I was kind of trying to think about this because if it's FX work. You would think most of that should, in theory, be able to done re- be done remotely. Because I was trying to think of what post production stuff you'd struggle with doing. Um, because FX work, I, there's no reason, yeah, reason I can't think of why you couldn't do that in a remote location because it's a person sat in front of a computer. It's the same with you know music as well. Like the composers, most of the composers, you know, I've spoken to many, many of them, they're locked in tiny bunkers in the middle of nowhere. So, um, or in the middle of a city somewhere. So in most cases, the music shouldn't be a problem. The bits that I think may be an issue is uh, what they call ADR, which is recording, re-recording voice lines, which that may be tricky to do because you you need to have somebody there recording it and you need to have a system set up for them to be able to kind of do that. Usually you do that in a studio environment. It may be possible to do that remotely, but that may be a little more tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's them re-recording lines that maybe didn't get possibly picked up quite right the first time and there is a surprising amount of adr that goes on the other thing which i did think of is foley um foley is the the art of them putting sound effects back onto to things um and a lot of that is done live so when people are when you've got like people walking along the floor um they record it by you know somebody in a studio walking on gravel you know um it's it's not putting a bunch of sound effects because it has to be synced so specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fairly an amazing and fascinating art form. Um, but you tend to need to do that in a specialist studio environment because, it, you know, they have bunches of things around them to record those kind of noises. You know, they'll, they'll have like, you know, almost pots and pans and like, you know, sheet like i say things on the floor that are like sheets of gravel that they can walk on and sand and you know all sorts of different surfaces and stuff um so and and they they might have a studio room set up at a film studio to do that but it's not the type of thing that you would have at home necessarily to do so that something like foley might be a lot more tricky and again there is a lot of foley in these sort of shows because if you think about the walking dead it's recorded outdoors it's gonna be very difficult to pick up like things like twig snapping and you you know and the and the footsteps of things people walking along the ground a lot of that sort of stuff that i suspect there is quite a lot of that kind of thing going on with the post-production so it's not just a case of of the sfx it's probably a lot about the sound i would have thought as well that's that's the thing i can I, I particularly think is probably going to be complicated. Plus, it may be that there are close-up pickup shots and things like that that they haven't done. It maybe they've got some key things that are missing um, that maybe they were planning on doing, and maybe that falls into post-production. You know, maybe close-ups of I don't know somebody's hand loading a gun, or that there, there may be little things like that that they need to add in and they weren't recorded and maybe they're part of post-production. Although I, I would have thought that would be part of principal photography, but it might not be, it might be classed as Mm post-production. So in which case you need cameras and people on set to do that. Um, yeah, given what you've just kind of explained and that about like certain different, uh, close-ups and, and other things like that, given what I know happens in the Whisperer battle, obviously things might be different, remixed, etc. Uh, it makes sense that they might not be able to do some of those things. Um, I mean, given, yeah. I mean, this isn't really a spoiler, but given the fact that you said about like close-ups and stuff, and obviously there's going to be people in walker hordes and, and stuff like that. Yeah. That's where you might come across some, some problems as well. So, yeah. And I mean, you can CGI some stuff to a certain extent, um, but we don't know exactly what CGI stuff they're dealing with. Um, and it, 
yeah, 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 yes, you probably can do some of that remotely, but it, it is trickier to do it remotely because you've got to have everybody's got to have remote access into things and they will probably have libraries of stuff which will be on servers in one location and you need to be able to dive into that and they maybe they weren't as set up as they should have been for doing stuff like that uh, so it you know it, it, I, I suspect the fx stuff is less of an issue than maybe some of the sound stuff mm-hmm plus given this is a finale and all the things we've talked about leading up to it it could be quite like a busy episode as well so yeah, yeah exactly not, i mean there it. is probably quite a lot of it as well because either way you cut it it's going to slow down the processing in that because i mean it might take three months to post process an, an episode um and it you know it, it may be that it, that would take a month normally and it might take three months to do it now just surely because they're all in separate locations and it's just gonna you know if you're copy, copying because sfx files are going to be enormous and just surely not being in the the office where all the files are stored on a server and you can get everything instantaneously the fact that somebody is remotely it could take 10 times as long to get that file from you know wherever it's stored onto their computer edit it and then send it back again so it just slows the whole process down and so i i think whilst it technically is possible to do it externally it could take a lot longer to do that purely just because of the file transfer stuff yep uh, Cliff says, can we get some praise for Kaylee Fleming? Her acting in this episode was particularly incredible, yes. especially for yes, a young can. woman of uh, 13, question mark. Uh, she's doing 13. amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, we we did give praise in the, in the scene with her and Daryl. Uh, she's done just incredible so far, even outside of that scene, everything that we've seen with her already, uh, the emotional stuff with Michonne, and obviously chat she's had with Negan, and even things like, you know, killing walkers and stuff, which she's done not a ton of, but like enough for... Uh, you know, a, a young character to mm. be doing. Um, of course, she was well. Chandler was what going on eighteen uh, as he was as he was doing some of that stuff. Obviously, we saw some of that when uh, Carl was a bit younger. But uh, obviously, for for a um, young woman of of her age, she's she's doing really really great stuff on the show. So um, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, we, we, yeah, we gave her. She's gonna be yeah. yeah she, we she gave her a lot a of um, praise in yeah. that scene. So she's doing some good stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, can't wait to see more of her. And obviously, we have another episode to go, and at least another season. So uh, we shall see. Yeah. But um, really good stuff from her so far. Uh, Ian says, seeing as we have some time between now and the finale, of course, we don't know how much time. Uh, any predictions? Question mark. How closely could this episode line up to the comics? Question mark. Um, I mean, we kind of. I mean, I'm not gonna do death predictions because obviously, I, I, uh, yeah, might get things accidentally right or, or whatever I, d- I, don't, I don't know <laughs> but because uh, like, like I said when, when I was asking you kind of early for death predictions I just said no comment <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah so I mean you know the same stuff might not happen it might but I don't want to step on those toes yeah so I like, mean how, yes how we, closely we, could this episode line up to the comics um it's going in a direction where it's lining up pretty um similar to the comics uh, you have the walker horde you've got the Aaron and well Alden instead of Michonne uh, thing being trapped by the Whisperers. You've got Princess who's been introduced. Um, you're sort of returning in a way with the whole Maggie stuff because even though she didn't leave, she's still back. So she will be there hopefully for the finale episode, which we kind of know already. Um, so you've got a lot of pieces in place for this puzzle, I suppose, to line it up the same way. Of course, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but in terms of um, Ian asking here how closely could it line up to the comics uh it's looking pretty pretty close to it i would say uh i mean sure you've got certain characters missing and obviously certain characters that aren't in the book that are here now uh alden um daryl etc uh those sorts of characters but uh no i really like what they what they set up in this episode for the finale comic wise uh maggie returning possibly um you know sh- showing this new group princess being introduced the walker horde uh, and some other stuff which I won't get into as well. Uh, but you you have set up uh, some pretty good stuff. Uh, of course, you can't really answer that question per se. But um, any other predictions? No. I mean, you went through death predictions and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm liking what they're doing in terms of lining up. I- even just the finale itself, uh, I think is is looking pretty good. So, um, anything else you want to? Yeah, add to that? I mean, I no, I I mean I think it's difficult for me to predict deaths. Like I say, it's you know Ezekiel's the only one that I really sticks out to me as somebody that would kind of be pointed at as this person might not return, which could be a misdirect. 
quite easily mm. you know uh, as i say the other possibilities he makes it to the community and they fix him um you know when we had that sort of goodbye thing which seems pretty final between like jerry and ezekiel uh but again i'm i'm not entirely convinced that that is going to be a final thing i i will riot if they kill jerry because uh, <laughs> uh i love that character and i i love cooper as well he's amazing and um i think it, i would be sorry to see aaron go although he is the guy that puts himself into a very fairly precarious situations um gabriel you could possibly lose he seems like the most prominent figure you know out of that group that's there other than carol but um you know and daryl but we kind of know they're probably safe yeah i don't see either of them going anywhere um you've got rosita still there i guess yeah and again i don't know which way that will go uh I mean, you could lose Negan, but I think that would be a real tragedy as well. Yeah, I don't think he's going to go, necessarily. So, uh, we will yeah. just have to wait and see, of course. Um, we will be back at some point with the Walking Dead UK podcast. Of course, we're doing a bunch of other stuff as well on Entertainment Talk, so uh, don't forget about that stuff. Of course, we're covering some other stuff. Uh, run starts next week. Uh, Star Trek Discovery comes back for Season 3 soon. There was a teaser trailer kind of thing a few weeks ago or a week ago or whatever, so that should be soon. I'm going to be covering that, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the meantime, everything is, of course, on entertainmenttalk.org. Uh, if you, if you of course want to know if, when, and where these things come back or what happens with them, uh, David's got you covered for TV and film news. Geektown.co.uk. Uh, you can find uh, that in weekly podcast format on Tuesdays on Geektown.co.uk, and of course on podcast platforms. If you just search for Geektown, you should be able to find it on there. Uh, so listen to it on either of those places. Of course, check the website for other news and, and bits and pieces, and for the online Comic Con thing that you're doing. What, what yes, was it? Yes, again? we. Uh, we've got online Geek Town's online con, which is a a comic con we've got running up on the website. Uh, so it's got uh, a gaming section where you can go and look at a bunch of indie games, and we've got reviews with our lovely uh, Bex. She is up on there, having done reviews and uh, interviews and stuff with people in the indie comic and indie gaming world so there's a bunch of indie comic stuff on there if you uh, like independent comic stuff there is a geek shopping zone so you can go in there and buy stuff from a lot of the people that would be at comic cons right now uh, and unfortunately are, have had a massive dent in their income because their uh, comic con uh, isn't around you know they, they would usually be out there selling that stuff so we're trying to help those guys out by giving them a platform where they can uh, go you know and sell their their stuff we're not taking any money from it it's literally a bunch of things highlighting their products and linking through to their websites where you can go and buy stuff directly from them uh there is a bunch of guest panels up on there from previous comic cons so uh, we've got um some hilarious panels up on there some of my favorites are up on there and there's a bunch of them on our youtube channel as well and there's a bunch of cosplay photos if you're into cosplay and uh, you've been to a recent recent comic con either in mcm or wales uh there we've got a bunch of photos up on there from that as well excellent so check all that out on geektown.co.uk um yeah, we don't know when we'll be back for the finale. We'll let you know, of course. I'm sure AMC will definitely tell us as well. And you, you'll probably know for social media and all that sort of stuff when the episode is back. Um, I'm not even going to try and guess when the episode's going to be because we could be here all day doing that. Um, in the coming months or later in the years is, is as much as we know. So, uh, everybody, please stay safe and please stay at home <laughs> as well. Yes, uh, stay and, at uh, home. Yeah, please do that. It's really getting annoying. But, um, yeah, of course, you can find everything else that we're doing on entertainmenttalk.org. Like I said, lots of things happening at the moment. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, support Entertainment Talk, we are on Patreon. Please check out the $1 and $3 level tiers for review options and ad-free podcast options. Uh, Amazon affiliate link, if you're still buying stuff on Amazon, we can get a small cut of what you spend, but it won't cost you extra. So it'll be the same price, but we get a small cut. Uh, so you can do that as well. Our Amazon affiliate link, uh, iTunes feeds, please rate, review, and subscribe to those if you search for Entertainment Talk and for Geek Town on your podcast platform. Please Please rate, review, and subscribe to both. That will help both us out and keep you informed and all that sort of thing. Uh, word of mouth, please tell people that you know about the website and the iTunes feeds if you see them talking about something that we've covered, or just tell them anyway. I suppose you can do that uh, through word of mouth, of course, social media. 
Uh, please share them on Facebook and Twitter, and if you can, put them in different Facebook groups. Uh, and lastly, if you want to watch us on different streaming platforms, uh, me, Bex, and David stream on Twitch. Uh, Bex is streaming twice daily, by the way, so check her out, Trista Bites, yes. on, on Twitch. Uh, and of course, Robert does it sometimes as well on Mixer. Um, but if you want to watch me take on Nemesis and some other stuff, uh, Let's Play Sundays, look out for those as well. Thank you all very much for listening. Uh, I'll go and read the comics soon, probably not today, but some point soon, and refresh my memory. And we'll be back soon with the season finale, but keep up to date with everything else, else that we're doing. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.